Hi there, I'm on site at Electronica 2024 and joining me today is Alex Lido, the CEO of EPC. We're going to be talking about GAN, gallium nitride, and the future of untethered robots. Thank you for being here, Alex. Thank you. Please, uh, could you give a quick introduction to yourself? So, I, you know, EPC is 17 years in existence. Uh, before that, I was CEO of International Rectifier for uh, many years, and uh, my background is in power semiconductors. I am sometimes ashamed to admit it, but I'll say it to the camera. This is my 50th year in power electronics. Well, congratulations on your 50th year. Could you talk a little bit about who EPC is? So efficient power conversion uh, makes power devices based on gallium nitride grown on silicon wafers. Uh, and uh, we make devices from 350 volts down to 15 volts. And they're used in just all sorts of things. But primarily today, things like AI servers. If, if you use AI, you use our parts somewhere. Uh, humanoid robots, lots of satellites, uh, millions of cars, uh, things like that. But the, all the new applications are going towards GAN. Mm -hmm. I mean, GAN as a technology, as a topic, is certainly starting to gain traction in quite a few industries, as you've just highlighted. Before we get into the, the technical um, and the wider implications, could you talk a little bit about what the primary differences are between GAN and the traditional silicon-based semiconductors? Yeah, so when, when I first uh, started in this business, one of my earliest uh, developments was the power MOSFET. And uh, that, so I started out with this thing called a power MOSFET. And it was a very fast switch made in silicon that allowed for a lot of new things. Uh, you probably have 10,000 of our devices, of the devices that power MOSFETs uh, in the various things that you have, the computer, your anti-lug brakes, whatever it is. Gallium nitride is a superior type of transistor compared to the power MOSFET. It's faster, it's smaller, it's cheaper. Uh, and you can also integrate it more easily. So uh, if there's a new application, the tendency is for the new application to use GAN because it's better than the old stuff. And so slowly and slowly and slowly, the old power MOSFET uh, is becoming obsolete. And what kind of um, GAN solutions does EPC offer? Well, we have devices like from 15 volts to 350 volts. Uh, our devices uh, tend to be at not tend to be, we are at the leading edge. We're, I think, well acknowledged as the technology leader. And uh, devices of ours, for example, go into power supplies that sit next to the graphic processing units for AI service. That'd be one thing. They sit inside all the joints of a humanoid robot driving the little motors. That would be another thing, or even those little vacuum cleaners on the floor. Um, uh, you know, another thing would be now they're starting to appear in cars, powering the Class D audio systems in cars. Uh, if you see any of these autonomous vehicles and they have these spinning things all around them, those are called LiDAR units and they all use our GAN. Uh, and that's just, that's just the beginning. Uh, there's just, they're just everywhere. But if it's new, it tends to go towards GAN because that's a better component. Now that we've kind of, we've talked through some of the solutions that you offer, Let's talk about robotics, which I'm well aware is an area of expertise for you guys over at EPC. Um, there's this humanoid robo robot, which I know is not a new concept, but as a technology is sort of emerging. What, what does this mean to you and how does it differ from a conventional robot arm that you would see in a factory? Well, first of all, I, I think that we're, you know, some of us are getting older and uh, the regeneration of our population is, is not enough to, uh, to replace the people that are getting older. So we're going to need to have something in the developed world to do the kinds of tasks that people will no longer be available to do. And I think that's where humanoid robots will start. Uh, warehouse tasks, fast food uh, preparation, uh, home care for elderly, those are all areas where you need something that isn't just a robot arm attached to a table, you need something that is untethered. The minute it's untethered, of course, you have to worry about how heavy it is, you have to worry about how safe it is, because it can bang into things, and you have to worry about the efficiency of the batteries and, and all that, so it's got to last a long time without be, becoming useless. Um, so. All those things are what GAN does best. Uh, GAN is always very, very small, can always make things more efficient, 
uh, very lightweight, and makes things faster. And faster is important because if you've, if you've seen those humanoid robots, they're kind of like that, very slow and jerking around. Um, and that, that comes from two things. One is that the motor drives have to be very careful not to hit something. And also the brain isn't able to process the information fast enough to tell it where to go. So uh, we are in all those motors. We're also in the AI brain. And we're also in the eyes that detect what's around. And you know, on a, a very, I'll say, a thorough, modern, AI-driven humanoid robot, we have about $300 worth of content. I think I know the answer to this question, Alex, but do you believe that a humanoid robot is the future of robotics? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think humanoid robots are a uh, one type of robotics. Uh, they are the they'll probably always be the high-end robotic with the most functionality and also the most ability to learn efficiently through voice. Uh, but certainly you have robotics. For today, example is if you have microsurgery, it's probably done by a robot and that's powered by Argan. Uh, for the same reasons that humanoids are great because it's faster, more precise, and it's tiny. So you can do these microsurgeries with the little motor drives right there at the tip. Uh, but I think robotics are going to be more and more important to us and they'll be lower cost and they'll be easier to train. You mentioned it very briefly earlier uh, with regards to GAN and robotics, but could you provide uh, a more detailed overview of how you see this technology impacting on the robotics industry? So a robot, a humanoid robot has 40 motors. Now you can have a regular robot that's you know an arm on uh, that's serving cappuccino. It might have ten motors or seven motors. Each of those motors needs a motor drive, and the motor drive can be uh, big, in which case everything is heavy and slow. Or if you can make it really small and really efficient, you can fit it inside the motor. That's the goal, and you can do that with GAN. Even for very big motors, you can do that with GAN. And so what's going on is that all of these joints that you see, they're all powered by motors, and we're you know, making the GAN that goes in the drive for that motor. Uh, and, and that makes a difference, that motor can run faster, it's lighter weight because it sits right inside of there. Also, the motor, because GAN is faster than silicon, a higher frequency drive allows the motor to be more efficient. So we increase the efficiency, which of course increases the battery life, which is important in a robot. And you yourself said there are lots of different kinds of robots. Um, it would be great if we could briefly talk about autonomous robotics, which is another area. In your opinion, how is GAN technology supporting autonomous robots? So autonomous ro autonomy comes from a few things. One is it comes from the ability to understand your surroundings, the ability to decide what to do autonomously. Uh, and so one of that is an intellectual function, but a lot of it has to do with imaging. And if you want to understand where you are and your surroundings, the most efficient way to do it is with LIDAR. And the reason is because LIDAR, which shoots photons and measures how long it takes for them to come out, back, and that you know, speed of light is fixed so you know exactly where they are, it is the most efficient way to create a three-dimensional map because the information you get is the simplest information, X, Y, and Z. So if you want to understand your surroundings using the least amount of computer, use a LiDAR. So that's why you see autonomous cars use LiDAR, robots use LiDAR, they all use LiDAR. And so that becomes a very important part of autonomy. It has to have the vision for autonomy. Second most important part of autonomy is the ability to think. And so you have to put very high uh, um, intellect or um, you know, computing ability inside a robot that is very efficient. Of course, it can't, it can't you know, burn down the batteries while it thinks. So the power supplies in those AI systems are using GAN for that reason. And then, of course, the motors have to be efficient so the thing can run for a certain amount of time. Uh, and you know, without being recharged. So all of those are functions where GAN is a major contributor today. And I don't think it'll ever go back to the old way of doing business. 
I, I'm not sure that you would ever go back to older technology necessarily, right? Right, yeah. So with everything we've spoken about, Alex, what would be your key recommendations for developers of robots who are looking to use GAN? Well, I'd say that, that the developers of the robots, uh, if you are using motors, they should be powered with GAN. There's just no question about it. Uh, we can squeeze into the knuckle of your fingers on a robot. We can, you know, also power the, the hips, which are the most, they require the most amount of energy. Uh, and we've been doing it for a dozen years. So it's the logical solution. Um, I think most robot makers know that today. Also, if you're making an autonomous robot, you better have a good LiDAR system for the eyeballs. Uh, Cause that's that's the best way that they can see. Sure. How are you, how are you uh EPC positioning yourself to address the future demands of robotics and even you know, humanoid robots? I think that we're very early in identifying it as something that will be important. It's not a big market today. How many robots are there? I don't know, a few thousand maybe. Um, so we're early identifiers. Um, we are also organizing our product developments so that they are optimized for humanoid robot functions like the little motor drives. Um, the good news is that, that optimizing for a, a, a robot arm on a humanoid robot is the same as optimizing it for a, a, a surgical robot. It's also very similar to what it takes to make a good drone motor drive. So there are much bigger markets that stem from this, but our priority is to develop products that are optimized for the various joints in a robot. Well, thank you for that overview, Alex. It was really interesting. To wrap this up, could you tell us about your partnership with DigiKey and what it means for your customers? Well, so we started with DigiKey from the beginning, uh, and it was an essential element of our uh, success because DigiKey is able to get to every engineer on the planet with the best, simplest, most efficient interface. They can buy something and get it there tomorrow. So we, early on, didn't know who our customers would be. It was a new technology. We need to explore everything. So by having DigiKey able to um, not just stock our parts, but deliver them immediately to engineers and give us the information back as to who they delivered it to, allowed us very quickly to figure out who's using it, why, go visit them, and then optimize our product generation after generation. We could not have done it without DigiKey. And today, we can't go on without DigiKey, without question. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to speak to you. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much.